Hello, this is Greg Allison on Green Graves Garden and Worm Farm, coming to you from the 20th of June, 2020. From uh, the first day of summer, at least sometime today, the longest day of the year. And it's kind of warm out here on the longest day of the year. And we're going to harvest garlic. And I'm going to show you how, to, how I'm going to go about it. Now I've had a little bit of false attempt at it earlier. Now you can see right here, I've got this garlic planted about, oh, about nine inches apart. About right for planting corn. I might come back and plant corn in the same holes. This is here next to the greenhouse. It might give the greenhouse a little more summer shade if I plant corn here. A little late for planting corn, but I can still give it a go. Now, all that said, this garlic has played out. I really should have harvested this stuff back probably four weeks ago when the leaves first started to dry. When your first couple of leaves are dry, it's probably good enough for digging it up. Now, this ground is very hard here. So, uh, even though it was real soft when I planted it and the garlic's buried deep so I'm, I gotta take some extra steps to get it out from what I thought I was gonna do. In any event, I'm gonna show you something. Where I planted it thick, the garlic grew real big. I had somebody tell me, oh Greg, you plant it too thick, it won't grow. Well, it grow fine. But as an experiment, I planted some less thick and it didn't grow worth a hoot. So I, I find the growing it thick didn't seem to hurt it. <laughs> At least in the stalk department. We'll find out more about the bulbs later. Now, because the ground is so hard and the bulbs are so big, I'm not going to be able to just dig right around this hole and get it out. I've had to come up with another strategy. I tried that the other day and it was just not working. So what we're doing here is we're coming in here and pulling up this cloth along the edge. And by pulling the cloth up on the, along the edge, as you can see here, I'm just going to raise it up. And that'll give me some leverage to get off a distance from a garlic bulb with a regular shovel and or a fork and start to pry it loose so that I can uh, use a garden fork so I can break the soil up and get it out without damaging the, either the bulb or the garlic. I mean the bulb or the uh, fabric here. Because I plan to reuse this fabric if I can. It's like a razor for like five years. That'll be good for at least three. I'll tear it up, so I'm just raising it up and I can get distance to get around here and dig. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'll show how that's going to work here in a minute. So I got my garden fork and I got my deep shovel. It's really good for digging trees. When I was a kid, my dad had a, a nursery and we used this kind of shovel right here a lot in digging trees up. It's real good for digging deep. You get tap roots and things like that. So the chief objective though is to break this soil up at a distance away from the bulb so that I don't uh, damage the bulb and still get down in here. So there's two types of garlic. There's uh, soft neck garlic and hard neck garlic. Soft neck garlic when it's ready to harvest it just wilts over, falls over. Hard neck does not. And, and elephant garlic, it's not really a true garlic, it's a leek but it's hard neck. So you know, that you harvest it different. All I got here is hard neck varieties. Let me show you how to support my channel and get your heirloom seeds at the same time. Simply find one of my videos that has the, the links below. Some of my live sessions don't. So I'd say go in here to this video. So go down here, to, you can either go to my pinned comments and click more, or you can go up here to show more here. There's two ways. It's redundant. Show more or pinned comments, either way you're going to find links to videos and various other things. But at the very top, what you're going to find, these things were supporting my channel, teamed up with True Leaf Market, and here's the link. You click the link to True Leaf Market. Bada bang, there it is. Here, your non-GMO seed source since 1974. I look here what all you can get. You can get garden seeds, microgreen seeds, sprouting seeds, wheatgrass. You can get supplies to grow these things with. Everything you need. All kind of seeds, things that you need to get your garden going. See, microgreens, I should have to grow stuff indoors. Garden supplies, let's say you wanna grow carrots, bam. Parsnips. And not only that, but truly market actually tells you how to grow your seeds. Look at these carrots, are taste a little scrumptious. They tell you where it grows and how to plant them. You can't beat that. 
right here at True Leaf Market, an excellent source for your seeds. So please order, use the link below my channel, in my channel, in my videos. So please use the link and support my channel. Thank you very much. I'm gonna start up here just as an example. And this is a good distance off from that, but I brought it up right there. I'm just gonna get way down underneath it. Now this is uh, really deep buried garlic. Breaking up the soil around and underneath. I'm not going to pull it straight up and get it loosened up enough, and I'm not going to hit that other bulb over there next to it. Yeah, I think I've got something going on here. Mm. Maybe this is working. That sounds like it got loose there. Let's see what we come up with here. Ta da! Yay! There we mm. go. So, this is how we're going to dig this garlic up. I'll show you how we're going to hang it up in a little bit. If this worked, I had to break that soil up. So what you want to do when you do this, you just want to get the soil out of here as much as you can so it'll dry off. Brush it off, knock it off. We're not going to wash it. Because the objective is to keep this from getting wet. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, so I need to get all this up today. And that's the head of elephant garlic. Mm -hmm. Maybe if I hadn't let, let the scape get so big and flower, it would have been a bigger bulb. But that's still a lot bigger bulb than you get on regular garlic. Now, if I had let the scape grow, it probably would have been about yay big instead of this big. That's the difference. And to show you how good my garden is, we got a little guest hitchhiker here come up with a root. <laughs> a little baby worm. And he will get to go back. <laughs> so that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to work it through here. And I'm going to dig this up. All this patch and some more back there and more up there. i got lots of garlic to dig. This does have individual cloves in here. And uh, I will get with you and show you how I'm going to Clean this up, tie it up, and then hang it up. Okay, what you see here is a little garlic corn right hanging off from the root. There are probably some of these left in the ground that will probably try to make garlic sprout up next year. This little corn will make a single bulb. If you plant that bulb again, so I can plant this and grow it to single bulb, then when you plant the next year, it'll make an entire big bulb. So it's a two year process, kind of like the seeds that grow at uh, the end of the flowers. If you plant the seeds, they uh, will make a bulb one year and the next year will make a full multi-clove garlic head. So it'd be a two year process. Now if you just plant the cloves themselves, they will make an entire uh, multi-clove head like this. There's another little corn. Oop, I dropped that one. So I'm gonna save my corns. I'll probably plant them. Although it's actually easier and quicker just to plant the cloves themselves. But they're, they're interesting to have. And we got them. Got a lot growing on here. Well, in spite of having uh, the flower grow too long with the big scape, well, they still made real nice big bulbs. Looking pretty good. Now I have a hybrid hugelkultur system here. I do have a log planted in, down the middle of this bed. Somebody told me that these things wouldn't grow if you want wood. Now they won't grow there. Well, here, there's wood. Right of that wood from where I dug that one out. There was another one just a minute ago and I pulled it up big. Head of garlic had uh, wood in the root. Wouldn't be surprised if this one don't. I don't see no wood in this one, but it's planted. These are growing right on the log here. Yeah, you see that piece of wood there? That's what I'm talking about. So I'm actually pulling up several of these that have wood in the roots. <laughs> the roots just grow right through it and it grows just fine at all that. <laughs> Yeah, well, several like this. They go just fine. Not a problem. As long as the wood's punky and old. Or just somewhat old. <laughs> See, look at that. Two side by side. Right in a log. Punky log now. Right in the log. There's the corms. Okay, there we go. See that? And check out Mr. Happy Worm there. Keep finding these guys in the roots. Well, they get to go back. <laughs> no worms are harmed in the making of this movie. Check out all these little corms hanging on here. See that? So temporarily, I'm putting this stuff on this table. Just to get a start at drying while I'm still harvesting. At least it's in the shade. I had to get it out of the sun. You don't want this to dry in the sun. You want it to dry in the shade, but you want it to dry. I'm going to have to get it out before it rains. And so I'll ha start hanging this up before too long. I'll show you how to do that. And I'm basically going to hang it up from the lofters, rafters here above where I run the worms. Actually, these are not real rafters. Row rafters are up there. These are just some boards I laid across there holding things up. But that's where I'm going to put this garlic too. 
The good thing about this ground cloth is it served its purpose. It's kept the weeds out of here. As you can see, there's a few where there's holes, but not nearly the weeds that we normally have had. I've already not weeded this bed at all. Except I've weeded behind back here. We got a, I'm going to come in and pack cucumbers right next to this fence. And maybe I'll do corn here. You can see the way I'm digging this up, it's busting the soil up real good and making it good and loose, which will be helpful. Now, with all the loose corms, I know we're not getting all the corms up when we pull all this stuff out. There's going to be some down in here. So I imagine there'll be volunteer garlic coming up in here for some time. So I'm working with constrained space here. I mean, that's about as far as I can reach going across this bed. I've got the ones in the middle here, but getting the ones on the end, that come around to the other side is a pain. Now, 30 inch bed is normally the right size. So some of these I'm just having to reach in like this one, find the bulb and pull it out and pull it through. I don't like that. That's the easiest way to get this stuff out. Fortunately, this has been in the ground too long and the stems are getting weak. That I didn't really want to have happen. Talk about that more in a little bit. But it's important not to break these stems because you want to dry properly. So I'm in here digging with my hand, trying to find the bulb and grab it by my hand like that and pull it out. Now these bulbs are deep, that's a big one. <clears throat> Just pulling it through. So, yeah. oh, dirt on it. Check out the dirt off again here. That's the garden bed. Right there, a little bit. The principle of organic gardening is good soil is living soil. And living soil uh, has microbes and fungi in the soil to help support the plants. But the plants also help support it. So by taking these plants out, I've got to replant it here real quick. So hopefully I'll get that done in just a few days. I mean, ideally I should do it today, but I'm not have time to do it today. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, so we'll see how that works out. But I gotta plant this bed back as fast as I can. More garlic growing out of the wood. And here is the garlic we got out of 175 foot long bed. It's a big pile of it here. I gotta bone it up and see exactly what we got. We did have a few that broke off. You know, the problem is that when you let it stay so long, in the ground, some of the necks start getting rotted a little bit. It was too deep in the ground, stayed in the ground too long. It should have been got up earlier. And so the problem is you need to leave three to six, you know, well, excuse me, two to three inches of stem when you cut it so that it don't soak moisture in the air right up into the garlic because it needs to dry really good. And so that's a barrier. It keeps the air from going straight into the bulb. And some of these I just don't have that because it was, some of them are real good, but some of them just don't have that because it was, uh, a little too, see that's a real soft one right there, that and soft, this one's nice and hard, that's nice and hard, that's nice and hard. A few of them just broke off, so I'm going to have to do something with those earlier, probably cook them. There's some of my corms I got out of the ground, I'm sure there's a lot of them in the ground. And I'm going to tie this up, when it dries a little bit more I can get some more of this dirt off, and eventually I'll cut the garlic beards off. I'm going to leave it on here a little while, we'll have to cut that off too, because that can, moisture can soak up into that. So that's what we're going to do. Oh yeah, this is some other garlic that came up out of that bed too. This is not elephant garlic. I planted some other stuff. Something we got out of the grocery store. Just trying it out. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. <laughs> it grew though. It's hard neck. It. It's cool. There's turmeric trying to get away from here. And I found just a few more corms in the bottom of a bucket I was using. I'm sure there's a whole lot still on the ground. I want to make it come up again next year. <laughs> and there's still a lot of corms hanging on the roots here. I'm going to tie this in bundles of 20 each and hang it from rafters in my barn. I put my ladder in here, step ladder to hang it. Well, these aren't really true rafters. I said are just boards across here to put stuff on. I'm going to use some of the boards that are put on there for now, too. I'll hang it across here, across there, everywhere I can. And I may have to get some more to put down that way. So let's see how this goes. I'm going to do it 20 per bundle just because the room is actually limited. I got lots of garlic. And this is just one of many beds. I got several beds. Several more to come up. Should have already had them up. Now I'm going to use baling twine. Now this is a roll of baling twine I had. I'll share a secret about baling twine that some of my people I had working for me don't understand. They've been entwining it from the round and round and round the edge. Baling twine works put it straight up out of the center. That's how the hay baler does it. And I know I used to run hay balers. <laughs> it's a whole lot easier just to pull it straight up out of the center. So this is a nice little rope I can use to tie this stuff off. So I'm going to do uh, 
show me how much tight. So what I've done here is I made two bundles of tin. I want to try to cross them over and tie them, these two bundles together. I'll show you how I'm going to try it. Now this is just me trying it my first time. So let's see how this goes. Again, Valentine pulls out the top. I've got plenty of it. If I mess up, I got another whole roll because they come in two rolls of package. I'll tie these right here because each bundle is tied together with just a shoestring knot, nothing fancy. I'll tie this a little better. So I'm trying to get a cross pattern here. I'll just make a square knot here, old granny knot. My idea is to take these and have them hanging down like so over the rafters. Like that. I'll see how this works. Follow me here. Show. It's all free. <laughs> yeah. That's my first hanging. Maybe I should have made it a little higher up, but that's a start. The first garlic I've ever hung. See how that goes. I'll go do some more. And that's awkward trying to climb this ladder in here to put these up. Shake your ladder. Because this whole ladder is about the same height as this in the first place. And handling all this gets to be interesting. So it's kind of brave of me to get up here and do this. Well, I'm filming one way, but essentially, what I'm doing is I'm taking one side of each of these and drop them on each side of the other. Mm -hmm. Like so, hanging down from below, just like over there they do go. Wet. Check out these garlic scapes. I cut these about three weeks ago. And put them in this water and they're still fairly fresh and in fact bees are still coming to them we still have honeybees i'm not honeybees mostly bumblebees like these for some reason bumblebees really love them look at that and you know what they're still green you can still eat them isn't that amazing i'm really wondering if they'll make seed <laughs> kind of strange i kind of doubt it but holy smoke they're still making pollen and the bees still love them that's amazing Okay, with garlic, it's important that it dry out of the sun, out of the rain, in a place where the air can flow freely. And this part of my barn, with it being open as it is, qualifies as that. It's got a roof overhead, it's just out of the rain and out of the sun, and the air should flow, you know, fairly freely through here. And all that's important. I'm, I'm going to come back as that dirt dries off a little and dust it off. And eventually I'll cut off the garlic beards, but probably after, you don't have to in the first two weeks. Really, you got about a four-week drying system. Two weeks like this, and two weeks after you cut the rest of the scape off and the roots, the garlic beard, as some people call them. Garlic beards. I don't know anything about beards now, do I? <laughs> All right. So what we got, I got eight bundles of 20 uh, elephant garlic up here. And there's 18 uh, that we kind of tore off when we were harvesting them from the scape. So that's 160 and 18. So it's 178 heads of elephant garlic. Plus we got 19 heads of just regular garlic. 19 and 100 and what did I say? 78. So 178. And 19 would be 197. <laughs> so I believe we got 197 heads of garlic and 105 uh, separate uh, corms that we've already pulled out. And there's a few more corms hanging. 
So there we are. There we are, hanging up here. This is 197. 197. I hope that's what I said a minute ago. 197 heads of garlic. I could have got more. I could have planted it thicker in that upper end. I could have done over 200. Probably about 210, 15 out of a 75 foot bed. Now I know that. I'll plant it like that from now on. Nine inches apart. Do it just fine. No problem. So there we go. That's the garlic. We're giving it a grow. So don't forget, I'm going to have a lot more videos on gardening. How to grow your food. How to harvest food and live in the weeds and trees. I got to do a few more videos on wild edibles. I got a few, couple or three topics on that I want to do real soon. So to see all my videos, subscribe to my channel. Bang up that notification bell and click all to see all of my videos. And uh, to support my channel, click the links below. True Leaf Market. That's where you want to go to get your heirloom seeds. And right now you can still plant. I'm about to plant where I pull this garlic up. And I'll show you that too. But you know, you can still plant seed right now. So order your seeds right now. Make sure you have seeds. And you know what? You should order seeds for next season because you may not be able to anymore after this year. I just don't know. I would get ahead if I were you. And also you better consider right now is the time to prep. Because things are coming at us. So please um, check prepwithgreg.com. You can get $100 off a one month food storage. And you can go into my, uh, my Patriot Supply through that link and get all kind of prepping supplies. And that'll definitely help you. One of these days, you know, if the good Lord's will and the creeks don't rise, I'll be selling more worms again. And maybe some other things, but uh, for now, that's it. Um, just remember, the proposition of this channel is to help you survive, thrive, and stay out of the hive. And one of those things is to grow your own food. And the food that I'm showing you is highly medicinal. I grow a lot of turmeric, garlic, and things like that. These are highly medicinal foods. Not what you'd eat for your main course, of course. <laughs> That's another story for a horse. Anyway, everyone, much more to come. And I got some stuff coming up on electromagnetic pulse. I've got a major talk with uh, Dr. Peter Vincent Pry coming up. I'll be posting that either Wednesday or Thursday. I'll interview him on Wednesday. So let's we'll see how that goes. And thank you for watching.